today we'll be looking at a, a bleed your brake system. From the wheel farthest away from the brake cylinder uh, to the closest in that order. And you'll see me here hold my fingers up. I'll say number one, number two, number three, number four. And uh, the first one will be the uh, uh, passenger side rear or the right rear. And I'm saying number one. Uh, then we got the driver side rear number two. Then we got the uh, passenger side number three. And then four would be closest to the reservoir. And the next thing you'll see us doing here is um, you can see these guys ratchet the socket there, and we will be loosening the um, little valve there on the back. I think it's like a 10 or 8 millimeter uh, valve that opens and closes. And um, the idea here is. We're going to open the valve. Basically, real simple. I'm just gonna hook this line up. There we go. That tightened up. Okay, then make sure you got enough fluid in the reservoir, which I just filled up. We're good there. The bleeder right here. Get it opened up. And we'll come into the cab here. And I'm gonna hit the brake pedal a couple times until we get fluid squirting out of that, uh, that bleeder. And we'll push it in, then you want to let it up fast. Push it in, let it up fast. Now. gloves. The brake fluid is highly corrosive and can cause damage to your skin. Also wear glasses. You don't want any of that to get in your eyes. And when you're working around the car, especially uh, in front where the uh, master cylinder is at, you want to cover the body of the car so that none of the brake fluid gets on the body of the car because it will tear up the paint. You don't want that to happen. So always think safety first. I've seen now I have seen brakes bled in several different manners. One way is simply to have somebody sit in the car and as they're in the car they press on the brakes, brakes and you open the valve and then as they start to release the brakes you close the valve and the fluid lets all the fluid comes out and lets the air out. That's a tedious process. And you have to do each valve separately, usually from the back and then the front. Back and then the front. Today I'm going to show you how to flush your brake fluid. I'm putting brand new calipers on my truck because the old ones are going bad, they're leaking, and I don't want to flush the old brake fluid into the brand new calipers. So I'm going to flush the whole system with DOT3 brake fluid before I change out the brake calipers. The other thing is this fluid hasn't been flushed for probably since the truck was brand new, and this is a 2001 Mazda B3000 Ford Ranger, so in reality it should really be flushed anyway. Brake fluid should be flushed every two to three years because it's hygroscopic, meaning it likes to absorb water. The problem with water in the brake fluid is when water gets in here, water has a really low boiling point compared to brake fluid. Brake fluid, the boiling point could be 400 degrees, but water boiling point is 212 degrees Fahrenheit, so it's not very high. And the brakes get hot, and they could easily exceed 200 degrees Fahrenheit. So if that happens and you have a lot of water in your brake fluid, the water will vaporize, it'll evaporate, it'll boil, creating a void. When you press on the brake, that void is compressible, so it'll feel like you don't have any brakes. 
which is bad. Not only will it feel like you don't have any brakes, you won't have any brakes.